This is episode 24, and I'm going to talk about sleep and nutrition. I'm going to talk about what to eat and what not to eat. And I'm going to talk about when you should eat this and when you should avoid eating certain things. And so the key thing to focus on when it comes to nutrition and sleep, understanding what foods will prevent the synthesis and creation of melatonin, which is going to help you sleep, understanding what foods help create melatonin, and then also understanding what foods will fight against the effects of melatonin, making it harder for you to sleep, as melatonin will help you relax and put you in that sleep. It's also key to understand the digestive system, how long it takes for food to digest, and the impacts that ingredients have on the digestive system that will disrupt the sleep pattern. Let's talk about digestion, so you'll have a better understanding of how long it takes for the foods you eat to get into the bloodstream and impact your sleep. So the process of eating first starts when senses begin to sense that there's some food about to be chewed. And that is when saliva begins to develop. And then as you chew and eat up that food and the saliva breaks it down with the enzymes, it works its way down the esophagus. And once it gets into the stomach, it's going to spend about three to four hours in the stomach, get down, becoming a mush and entering into the duodenum, going into the small intestine. Now the small intestine, prior to it making down into the large intestine, it's going to get broken apart and all the nutrients and stuff that's needed there to help the body is gonna get sucked out and pushed into the bloodstream. So from the point of eating to the point of the foods going into the small intestine, it takes anywhere from four to six hours for that food to be into the bloodstream. So anything you consume that's gonna help with sleep needs to be consumed four to six hours prior to that. Understanding this is key to understanding when you're going to eat your last meal of the day and when to eat dinner. Since you know that it's going to take four to six hours for all the food in your stomach to get digested, you know to eat dinner four to six hours before you go to bed. This is critical because when the body is sleeping, it does not need to be digesting because there's other things happening in the stomach and the stomach and the digestive system needs to be cleared so the body can begin to go in and, 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 and do its job to clear out and repair the body at night. Okay, so let's, let's look at a nutrition schedule based on saying you're going to bed at 10 o'clock. So let's back up and let's... Let's talk about some of the ingredients you should avoid earlier in the day. So first, let's first look at caffeine. So caffeine can stay in the body anywhere from three up to eight hours, depending on who it is. You probably want to stop all caffeine consumption around two or three o'clock to ensure all the caffeine is out of your body. Because caffeine, what it does, it won't prevent the body from creating melatonin, but it'll fight against it because melatonin is helping you relax and caffeine is a stimulant. It'll do the opposite. So the caffeine will be fighting against the melatonin. Now what about alcohol? So alcohol in the body anywhere from four to eight hours. And so that means if you're having some alcohol with your meal, having some alcohol with your meal, that alcohol could still be in your system and could impact different parts of your body that's trying to rest. One small alcoholic drink with your meal would have minor impacts. Now you think alcohol, hey, it's a sedative, it might help me fall asleep. But when it's broken down, it can cause other impacts inside the body. So one thing that alcohol does do is you have an upper esophageal sphincter and a lower esophageal sphincter. Alcohol will relax and open that up. So as you lay down to go to sleep, your lower esophageal sphincter is open and allowing some of the bile and some whatever's left over your stomach to come up, cause gastric esophageal reflux disorder and, and do damage your esophagus with that acid. In episode one, I went in detail on melatonin synthesis and how melatonin is created. You know, it starts with tryptophan, an amino acid that we can only get from our diet. And then that is further metabolized down into a neurotransmitter that is called 5-HTP, which is then further metabolized down to serotonin, which then is broken down into melatonin and pushed into the bloodstream. So you need to ensure that you, throughout the day and that last meal you have food that has tryptophan in it. And you can find these in, in lots of proteins and cheeses and milks and yogurts and things like that. And a lot of seeds have the tryptophan in it to help you sleep. But keep in mind how it takes four to six hours for that food to digest. So, so if you want that tryptophan to help benefit your, your sleep for that night, you need to make sure that you're having lots of tryptophan for lunch. Some of the things that are hard to digest. So when it comes to what is that meal going to be like for dinner? So citric acids are hard for the stomach to digest. Fatty foods are hard for the stomach to digest. So milk gets down in your stomach and it gets curdled and becomes a solid. It is more difficult to digest even though it's liquid. Fake sugars such as sucrose and aspartame is difficult to digest. So you want to make sure your meals are low in fat. You do not have these fake sugars. That You do not have citrus in order to help your body sleep. What about that late evening snack before you're about to go to bed? The best snack to have is actually water. 
and I'll tell you why. So what happens when you're in the deep sleep stage, that is when your body is sitting in the cleaning crew. The garbage man's coming, he's, the lymphatic system is cleaning the garbage out of your brain, there's systems going out, cleaning out the digestive system, helping repair the muscles and things like that. If the cleanup crew shows up in the stomach and the small intestine is ready to start cleaning stuff up and hey, the party's still going on, there's people in the way, got all this food in the way, it cannot properly clean out the system. And so if you are eating foods right before you go to bed, you are now going to have stuff in the way, which is going to aggravate your stomach, cause more stomach pain, and not have you properly recovered during the night like you should to be ready for the next for the next productive day. So many nutritionists say the best thing to do is have water, a chilled water. And they recommend if you have to have something, have liquid, but at least stay away from milk. Skim milk might not be as bad on your stomach, but once you swallow that milk and it becomes a solid and curdled in your stomach, you're gonna cause all kinds of trouble. But if you really have to have a snack, avoid anything with fake sugars, anything with citrus in it, and anything with fat. And what you should actually have before you sleep is have some type of a tea. A chamomile tea, a lavender tea, those types of teas, the sleepy time teas, are strong in neurotransmitters, which help kind of grease the skids and help the synthesis of melatonin. Roll this up. By 1 o'clock, you want to stop your caffeine intake. Really, by 2 o'clock, you should stop drinking. And definitely at night, do not have a nightcap. And another thing alcohol can do is mess up your sleep stages. So we go through these different stages at night, and key things have to happen to the body through those stages to allow the body to recover. It can add a factor to the cycle and mess up the sleep cycle so you're getting the accurate sleep cycles like you're supposed to. Lunchtime, you want to have meals that are strong and tryptophan. Around 1 o'clock, you want to cease all caffeine intake. Around 2 o'clock, definitely cease heavy drinking. If you have a drink with dinner, make sure it's a light drink. You want to be sure you're eating your meal anywhere from 3 to 6 hours prior to going to bed. And this will help ensure that your body is postured and you are helping your body sleep. Thanks for joining this episode and I'll see you for episode 25.